Hi everybody, Crystal here from Elite Hair Care USA. So this is a live video or for those of you who are watching the replay, a live um, recording all about the pros and cons of being natural versus the pros and cons of being relaxed. So I've actually touched on this topic a couple times before. And it was like, okay, let me touch on it again because there's a lot of people out there who have been battling um, back and forth on if they want to be natural, um, do they want to be relaxed, does it make sense, that kind of thing. So that was kind of the reason why I decided to jump on here and do this live video. And then, you know, for the people who are on the live, you definitely are welcome to comment in in regards to this conversation about the pros and the cons. So I'm going to start with um, High Tampa, Florida. I'm going to start with relaxed hair um, because I have a full-on relaxer with the pizza hair that does not want to lay down. And I'm going to talk about the pros and the cons of having a relaxer, okay? So let's start with the positives. Let's start with the positives. And these are all, in my opinion, the positives, okay? The positives of having a relaxer is, number one, humidity control. It is the ultimate form of humidity control. You do not have to worry about the humidity when you have a relaxer. Um, number two, you don't have to really, you don't have to be overly concerned about the upkeep. And let me say this in the nicest way. While I am not telling you you don't have to do anything to your hair because you are relaxed, the upkeep of a relaxed person's hair is not as complicated as the upkeep as of a natural person. And I don't want my natural goddesses to take this to their head because people love to take things over their head and reach up here in these curtains. Why I say that is... With relaxed hair, it's almost automatic that you have to care for it. So it's not, a, oh man, what product is best for me? Oh man, oh man, what's my porosity like? You don't have to worry about a lot of that because technically if you're relaxed, your hair is already porous because relaxer does that. Whereas natural hair, you have to determine if you're low porosity, high porosity, medium porosity, that kind of thing. So it's very... um. It's a little easier to care for relaxed hair. So that's another um, pro when it comes on to being relaxed. Let's talk about some cons. And then I'll still go back and forth between pros and cons. Let's talk about some cons of being relaxed. Relaxed hair cannot tolerate intense lightning and intense heat. It really cannot tolerate it. Why? Because it's high, it's overly porous. This hair, when I say porous, for those of you who are not hairstylists, porous means it is um it easily absorbs anything that it touches, including heat. Um, it's easily it easily can be damaged with things such as heat, chemicals such as color, lightener, um, relaxer. It can easily be damaged because it is already porous. So, like with me, I have a full-on relaxer. But I also have fine textured hair. My hair is extremely porous because it is fully relaxed. But at the same time, can I get up and say I want to be a level 10 with bleach or lightener? I cannot. I won't have any hair within the next two to three processes. So I don't really have a lot of options when it comes on to relaxed hair and using um, or getting things like high lifting colors, um, excessive flat ironing. I can't do that. Right? Other cons with relaxed hair, you have to maintain it within a certain period of time. So you can't really get up and say, well, I'm going to get a relaxer and I'm not going to do anything to my hair for another year and a half. You won't have any hair left. You're going to have a lot of natural new grow and that hair is going to look like dreadlocks because you won't do anything to it, right? So that is another con to having relaxed hair. Is it possible for a future combo of frizzy gray hair in transition stage on wavy hair? Uh, actually, no. That seems extremely personal, um, Jerry. So, uh, honestly, no. That, that's, that seems like a one-person kind of conversation. So, no, I won't be doing a video on that one. 
How often do you have to wash your hair when it is relaxed? With Regardless if it's relaxed or natural, it should be within a two-week span. Regardless if it's relaxed or natural, it should be within a two-week span. Um, the reason why I put it at two weeks for natural and relaxed hair is because it's not just the hair that you have to worry about. You're also talking about scalp health, scalp health and the health of the strand itself, regardless if it's natural or relaxed. And after about two weeks, your body has built up a lot of oils. You have released a lot of toxins and salts into the hair. Remember, your hair is where your pores are. There's a pore there. So all of that toxin, buildup, salt, all of that goes straight into the follicle. So after about two weeks, that needs to be washed out thoroughly, thoroughly washed out. Okay, so back to um, what I was saying in regards to the pros and cons of relaxed hair. So another con of having relaxed hair is you have to be mindful of the protective styles that are not so protective that you put in your hair. If you have a relaxer, that hair is extremely compromised. And when I say extremely compromised, it has been broken down to the maximum of your ability without actually using lightener. So when you have lightener, okay, if you have lightener, lightener will literally eat through relaxed hair if you're not careful. I'm not saying that you're going to be bald head because you got highlights. No. But lightener is one of those things where on top of a chemical service, on top of something like a relaxer that breaks the hair down almost 80 to 90 percent, that is already compromised hair to then go and put something that is um, two times what a relaxer can do. And break it down even more, where you really don't have the uh, um, ability to break it down even more. This is why people who have high lift colors, and hence the reason why people who have high lift colors, their hair is typically short. Let me know one African American with natural or relaxed, well, not even natural hair, with relaxed hair that has a full on head of platinum blonde and their hair is down their bottom. Name one, and it has to be their hair. Name one. I'm waiting on someone to name one because I'm more than certain that no one can name one person who has full on platinum hair and their hair is down to their bottom and they have a relaxer. I'll wait. Okay, I don't think anybody knows one. Right, because that's actually not pop, not possible. I don't care how much Olaplex you use. I don't care how much B3 you use. Beyonce, girl, um, Hershey. I'm glad you put three question marks behind that. And answer yourself again. Let me know where. And what part of it is her hair. Nope, I'm not talking about with a weave. I'm talking about with their actual relaxed hair. Does anyone know of one person who has level seven or higher relaxed hair with level seven or higher lifting in regards to bleach, lightener, blonde, and their hair is past their shoulders and down to their bottom. And that hair has no issues whatsoever and is continuously growing and they're continuously lightening it. Tell me one. None. There's none. You know why there's none? Because relaxer and color, while they're okay to put together, they don't mix for that long of a time. Okay? Because whenever you lighten hair, I'm going to tell you how lightener works. So lightener works from the inside out. Okay? It doesn't work from the outside in. It works from the inside out. So it is lifting all of that color molecule or what they call um, pigment. You can say melanin too, but pigment. Pigment. It is removing the pigment from the actual hair. Okay? And it is creating a lighter color as you go. Right. Y'all get where y'all y'all are still with me. So if you take a black shirt, and I want someone to do this. I'm going to do this one day as an experiment. Take a black shirt, okay? Pour bleach on that black shirt and put it in, pour, put it in a bowl. Pour bleach on the black shirt. Cover the bowl and let it rest for 45 minutes. And then I want you to open that bowl with that black shirt that you just poured bleach on and tell me what it looks like. It will most likely have holes in it. 
It will most likely have patchy spots in it. It won't be bleached. It won't be lighter. It won't be white. Okay. You know why? Because when you're starting from level one here and you're trying to get to level 10 in one process, in two processes, in three processes, that's not possible. And I'm going to tell you why. Well, let me not say it's not possible. It's possible, but it's not possible in a healthy way. It's not possible in a healthy way. Because if you lighten dark hair, it really actually doesn't go to platinum blonde. It barely goes to light blonde because you have so many underlying pigments to eat through just to get to the pale yellow. That's almost, it's almost impossible in one or two processes. And if you can get it in one or two processes, that hair was so porous that it won't even last your client three or four months. They're going to be coming to you because it's shedding and they're shedding like a dog. It looks like an animal sitting on a chair. Every time they get up, they're looking like, ha ha, every time they get up because there's no hair there. You just extracted all of the actual pigment from the hair. So you left nothing behind. So that is another con of being relaxed. You don't have the option of high lift colors for a long lasting thing where you can do this on a constant basis. I don't care whose treatments you are using. And there's going to be that one stylist and one client who wants to rebut what I said, but I said what I said. Period. <laughs> right? Hey, Octavia. That's a different name. Anyhow, so those are some pros and cons of being relaxed, which you'll hear me go back and forth as I think of them because they kind of just pop into my head. Now, let's talk about the pros and cons of being natural. Okay? Let's, let's start with some positivity on the naturals, y'all, because I know there's going to be one holier-than-thou natural on here that wants to just roast me and just carry on, but you do just that. Carry on, okay? Okay. So the pros of being natural. Um, you are able to do a lot more styling in regards to protective that are not so protective styles, right? You are able to do um, some, some textures. Not all textures are created equal, you guys. Some natural textures are able to do very nice wash and go. Get in the shower, Shake that baby and leave your house. Whereas a relaxed head, we can't get in the shower, shake that baby and leave our house. You're going to look like a wet dog. Right? Natural clients with a certain texture or hair type also has the ability of getting higher lift colors. And I didn't say ultimately high lift. I said higher lift. Why? Because virgin hair actually is, it's healthier in lifting than relaxed hair. Relaxed hair is highly porous. Virgin hair has a, a better elasticity. The porosity typically is a lot more even, whereas relaxed hair, the porosity is uneven, and we're using things to fill the porosity, fill the holes so that we can do certain things, right? So with natural hair, you have the ability and the, um, yeah, you have the ability to do things like high lift colors. My relaxed hair has started coming in silver and turns blonde. I use an oil product that hides the blonde. Thank God it's ugly and weird looking as it is after I wash and air dry. Yeah, that's a unique situation for you to be able to have silver and it turns into blonde. That's different. I'm a natural 3C and my hair is dyed black. I would like to get some color, but scared I will shed. So we'll get into the cons of that um, in regards to the hair color. So you guys will know a little bit more about that. So with natural hair, some other pros about having natural hair is it's a stronger head of hair. It is a much stronger head of hair than a relaxed head. Whereas natural hair, it is what we consider, if it's fully natural, it's considered to be virgin hair in the rawest form. That is virgin hair, right? Relaxed hair is not virgin hair. It is already a chemically processed head of hair. Now, let me be clear. If you color your hair and you are natural, you are no longer able to tell people 
Okay, I'm about to step on a lot of corns real quick. You are no longer able to tell people that you have a virgin head of hair. You do not. Okay, you have now chemically processed natural hair. And I know a lot of you are like, oh, that don't make sense. That don't make sense. It does make sense. You use a chemical to alter the color of that hair. That is no longer virgin hair. Virgin hair is hair that has never been touched with any chemical whatsoever. Let me be very clear about that. There's a reason why when you're donating to companies like Locks of Love, when the, when the Indians are donating and selling their hair, that they, have, they are selling hair that they have never touched with a color or chemical. Why? Because it would never be considered virgin at that point. So stop telling people that you a girl, I'm so, I'm oh so Afrocentric, I'm vegan, I'm all this, and you got hair color in there. You have a lightener. There's, we're not going to do that. Oh, oh, I'm 100% vegan. But you got highlights? What? Do you guys know that for a company to claim that they are vegan, their company or their, their manufacturing facilities cannot be in the actual vicinity of any type of animal whatsoever? So it's very complicated for a hair care company to claim to be 100% vegan. So for those out there who are claiming that they are vegan and that they have all this and that, and now you have lightener or you have highlights in your head, you're no longer a vegan, so stop it. Stop it. I know I'm hurting a lot of feelings. It'll be okay. You'll get out your feelings in a second. Right? So let's talk about some cons of natural hair. While I can go through a long list, I'm not going to do that because then people are going to say, oh, I don't like the way she spoke about natural hair. Some cons with natural hair. It does not last with almost any style that you do, even when it is a wash and go. You jump out of the shower and that baby is looking absolutely amazing. That curl pattern is popping. You just spent five minutes putting in all kinds of putties, clays tree barks, all kind of lint, honey, aloe, coconut oil, macadamia nut oil, goddess serum. You just use leave-in conditioner. Girl, you just made that, that hair go. And it's so heavy from all the product that you put on, it's going. And you step outside your door right here in Florida, right? And the humidity kicks in and you're outside for about an hour and that baby gets to dry and cracking. It don't hold any style. <laughs> I get this a lot, y'all. It doesn't hold a style. Not even the wash and go glass. Because once that baby dries out, you're back to an afro. Mm-hmm. Another con of natural hair is when it is straightened, it doesn't last. It's not made to last. Your natural curl pattern is there to take over. It's doing what it is supposed to do. It is. It's doing what it's supposed to do. It's doing what it is supposed to do. Another con of having natural hair, okay? You use way more product than any other hair texture or type. And if someone could tell me why you use so much product, and they give me the correct answer, you'll get a prize. Why is it that natural hair uses way more product than relaxed hair? Hair is porous. Yeah, that's one. Because it needs more attention. So, Pamela, I'm glad you said that. I'm actually glad you said that, um, Pamela. So, natural hair requires more product, not because it needs more attention, but because you're dealing with different porosities. It's never going to be equal in porosity. It is always going to be different in each place because one place will get more attention than another. So typically, we focus our attention right here in the crown of our head and our hairline. We don't see anything back here. We don't see behind our ear. We don't see the nape of our neck. We focus all of our attention in the crown. So with that being said, you brush that area more. When you're washing your hair, you focus more on washing that area. 
When you're blow drying your hair, you focus more on blow drying that area. When you're styling your hair, you're focused more on how that area looks. So that area is going to be way more porous than another area in the head. So now you're dealing with different porosities, which means that different areas of the head now requires different things. So you're buying 1,800 products because you're trying to cater to each individual situation, not knowing that that is not how it works. You cater to the majority of the head. So if the majority of the head is low porosity, then you're going to cater to just that. But we don't understand that because we didn't know that. So I'm telling you how this works. If you have a different porosity in different parts of your head, you're going to cater to the part, you're going to cater your products to the one that is the majority of the head. So my natural clients, they typically are the product hoarders. They typically hoard the most product. How do they hoard the most product? Because you'll buy a product now, not knowing that the hair changes every so often. The hair will change with just a shift of a hormone. The hair will change within the phase of hair growth because the hair growth cycle is in three phases. It grows in, grows out, falls out, grows in, grows out, falls out, grows in, grows out, falls out. So new hair is always coming. So that porosity is always changing. So if you're buying a product and that product has been working for you for one year and you have now gone through the phases of the new hair growth and that porosity has changed, your complaint is now, oh, that product don't work for me no more and it was working just fine. My hair looked just fine for a year and now I'm at this. Why? Because your hair changed again. Your hair changed again. So now the product that was working for you five months ago no longer works. So then you go and you fall into the masses and buy more product. Now you've become a product hoarder because you're trying to cater to the different situations that you're dealing with. Porosity changes. Moisture retention is hard to keep. Porosity does change. It changes in the instant. Your porosity can actually change in a wash. Your porosity can change by just blow drying your hair. Your porosity can change. Your porosity can change in the instant. Your porosity can change by just getting some highlights. And now you have extremely porous hair. You can go from low to high porosity in one phase within five to ten minutes. Just that quick. So my natural fiend, my natural, my natural fiends, I didn't mean to say it like that. My natural family are typically the ones to hoard the most product. Whereas relaxed people, relaxed clients don't typically have a lot of products. If you look at the bathroom of a relaxed person and compare it to the bathroom of a natural hair person, natural hair clients typically have about six times the amount of product. And it's not because you're just a junkie to buying anything you see, but because you're trying to cater to the problem that you currently, currently have it. Right now, it might be your curl patterns off and you're trying to define your curl pattern. So you go and buy 17 putties that you saw. One lady on YouTube said to use this. The other lady said to use egg yolks and carpet lint. So you go buy that too. Okay, so um, Taraji Henson, P. Henson decided, okay, she's going to be natural today. And now she's selling to you that she uses sexy hair. Never touched it, but you bought it. That's why we say it like that. I just washed my hair today with the goddess shampoo and conditioner. My hair has gotten dry. My hair had gotten dry in a week. I have natural hair. I have lots of products. I don't know if I'm understanding. Is that a question or a statement? So who won? Nicole, nobody won. <laughs> no one answered the question absolutely correct. Hey, Shawty Red. So another con of having natural hair is you become dependent on something that you should not be dependent on, which is protective styles that are not so protective. Natural hair clients are two times more or two times easier to become dependent on things such as wigs, and protective that are not so protective styles. Why? Because there's nothing more that you can do to your own hair. Natural people or natural clients will go natural for the wrong reasons at some time. 
not everyone, because some people go natural for the right reason. Things like they have sensitivities. They are um, deciding that they just want to embrace what God gave them. All of that good stuff, which I'm not against at all. But natural hair clients are typically much faster to go towards a protective style than relaxed hair clients. Why? Because you cannot do as much with your hair. So you get dependent on those kinds of things. And now you're battling hair loss. Now you're battling alopecia. Now you've created an even bigger problem than you, than you had before because you couldn't manage your natural hair, so you decided to do just that. Okay, I'm going to go natural just to cover it up with a weave. Did you all hear me, Gwen? I'm going to go natural just to get sew-ins for the next seven years. Tell me where this makes sense. I'm going to go natural just to braid my hair back and wear wigs for the next nine years. Do y'all understand what I'm, what I'm saying here? That does not make sense. And while I know there's a couple of you on here who's doing it, that's okay. We're all grown. That's okay. We are all grown, and I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand and tell me that you do it. But let's make some sense here and understand that just because you want to wear wigs, just because you want to wear this and that, that is not a legitimate reason to say, oh, I'm about to go natural because guess what? You go natural for the wrong reason, and then you neglect that good, beautiful head of hair that you have. Do you ever regret relaxing your hair? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Natural hair is not created for everyone. Relaxed hair is not created for everyone. Relaxed hair was created for me by my choice. It works for me, okay? As you clearly can see, it's a struggle keeping up even my relaxed hair. Because that's my hair. I have te very fine textured hair. And fine textured hair is the most delicate. And it is also the most complicated to care for because nothing holds. Would I want to be natural? I would not. I don't enjoy it. I tried it. I don't enjoy it. But that's my choice. Now, for anyone other than myself, everyone has the right to make their own decision. But let's make some smart decisions here. There's no reason why you should be going natural and, and claiming you're just, just natural oh, person. Yet I see you with nothing but bundles for the next seven and a half years. And then you don't have any edges or a hairline because all you do is wear wigs. So what was the point? You were better off being relaxed and taking care of it. And you can cut it or color it and all of that from here from time to time. And you can still do your little protective styles here and there, but you're not dependent on it. Now you've gone natural to become dependent on something that wasn't made for you to be dependent on. It was made for a temporary style to enhance your look. Fine texture hair is hard to work. It's a pain, but it's worth it. Fine textured hair is extremely hard to work with. So as you guys know, I just got my hair done Saturday at 530. Look at my hair. Today is Monday. This is my, 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 my dilemmas right here. Everything is not in place anymore. My hair is soft as soft. I, I sprayed it till, the, till no end. It, it's just this is what I deal with. So while there's pros and cons to everything, just because I have a shortcut and it's all that, that don't mean that it's just that simple either, but... I embrace it. Is it true grease is bad for your scalp? Absolutely not. So let's be honest here. We have grandmothers, grandfathers, great-grandmothers, the lady in China, the man who lives up the street from me who walks every single day. They're like 132 years old, okay? And they've been using hair oil with no problem, yet we are not living to 45. There's a big problem here, and we don't use hair grease. So apparently we've been told, we've been told the dumb stuff. We've been told the foolishness. Because my neighbor is like 179,000 years old and he's still living. He can even walk up the street. His wife too, and I know they've been using hair grease and all that. Yeah. 
does not make sense. I'm natural and wear my own hair in twists, no weaves or wigs. And that's awesome. And I'm not against the people who wear the weaves or the wigs because I do. I wear weaves or wigs, but I use them for what they're made for, temporary purposes. There's absolutely no reason why a person should get a wig installed on their head and you have that thing on for three weeks. And you wonder why you got, got, got all kind of fungus and bacteria and all that growing. That stuff grows in cold, dark places. And under that wig is a cold, dark, nasty place. Like, come on, y'all. Let's use our sense when we're doing stuff. Like, come on. How do you feel about Carol's daughter? I've heard good things, but I don't use it, babe. My kids are real simplistic with their hair care. Shampoo, condition, a little bit of grease, get their hair braided down, or they wear it in bubbles. My oldest should wear two braids because she's the same. She's too old for that now. She lucky. She's lucky because I'm the type of parent make you wear bubbles to school. Good to know. I wear cornrows. There's nothing wrong with cornrows, but they should not be a permanent fix. Do you make dread weave, dreads weave? I don't. I don't even have the time in the day. I barely sleep. As a stylist myself, everything you're saying is so true and makes sense. Thank you. Do you have a product for dry hair? Every one of my products is for dry hair. What about waves? What about waves? What can you do for a dry scalp? Moisturize more. Dry scalp typically, okay. So the clients that I see the most dry scalp with is the ones who are natural or relaxed and they wear a lot of wigs or protective styles that are not so protective. Why? Because the hair needs oxygen. It's just like teeth. So let me give you guys an analogy. This is going to be a hood person analogy, okay? Because I'm not, I haven't always been poshy poshy, right? So we my, and I talk to, I talk to women. It's what, a lot of women on here. So a dude comes up to you, okay? And he come up and be like, he, he look at you like, hey, sweetheart, like, well, hey, what's going on, sweetheart? You looking like, you know what I'm saying? Like, come with a real, you know what I mean? Come with a, right? And as he say, come you see his all his his teeth have gold caps on them and the gold caps you can clearly tell they're from like 1975 we're in like 2019 okay so because he has the gold caps on his teeth his teeth that are actually in there the enamel has rotted away and those teeth are gone so his breath smells like shit okay that clearly tells you that teeth need oxygen they will not survive without it so they've been covered up for 1,800 years, and he's talking in your face. Hello, somebody. Teeth need oxygen. They are attached to your gums that are attached to your mouth, and that mouth is a part of your body. It's the same thing as the hair. The hair follicle needs oxygen. It is attached to your scalp. Your scalp is a part of your head. Your head is a part of your body. They are all one big system. They all need oxygen to thrive and survive. And if you do not do that, guess what happens? It stinks and it dies. It rots. It's no different from the stinky dude who was talking in your face with gold teeth. So I hope that analogy resonated with someone because I'm, I'm giving y'all hood talk now. I'm giving y'all the Pine Hills hood talk. Okay? With a little, as much comedy as I'm putting in here because it's always best to put comedy into something that is serious so that people... King! My dog has lost his mind, y'all. This man is in here howling. Get out here! King. Damn dog scared the hell out of me. Come here, boy. Hey. Get out here. Come here. You come here. What are you in there doing? Why are you howling? Have you lost your mind? Damn dog scared the hell out of me. What are you doing? What were you doing in there? Hey, you I'm over here. You look at me. No, no. King, what were you doing? Why are you in there making all that noise? Why are you making all that noise? Hmm. 
Damn crazy dog. Oh, it's crazy. Lay down. And then he walks off. Thank you. Yes, he's a bully. He's an American bully. Hold on, guys. I'm going back through your... Shoddy red set of cleaning, too. I'm done. <laughs> I'm going to stop giving y'all analogies because y'all are going to be dying right now. I've been natural 20 years, and I love it. Your dog is so funny. Thank you, Kimberly. No, he scared the life out of me. He's in here howling. I've never heard this dog howl. I wasn't even ignoring him. The dog sleep. He's dog. He doesn't sleep. He's more bulldog than pit bull, so he sleeps like that. His eyes are always red. He's always asleep. He sleeps more than us put together. Like he pays bills in here. How often should you wash your hair? So Grace, I talk about this on every single live. So Grace, you got like nine hundred videos to go watch, babe. And I answer that question eight hundred times. I promise you. Does he ever answer you? Absolutely not. He turns his face towards the wall. He won't look at me if I'm if I'm scolding him. He'll turn his face against the wall, or he'll he'll give me his back or something. And then when I get upset, is when he gives me full attention. Bubbles are hair barrettes. <laughs> I'm a new subby. I'm going back to a relaxer. It's easier for me to maintain because I love my ponytails. That natural is a work in itself, especially for my career. Natural hair is a lot of work, guys. And it's not. I'm not saying because I'm not natural. But natural hair is a lot of work. It's a lot of work and it costs a lot of money. And you waste a lot of money. And I'm not saying that because I am relaxed and I'm oh, I'm. I'm queen against naturals. No, because I could care less if you want to be natural or I could care less if you want to be relaxed as long as you're happy. That's all that matters to me. But natural hair will leave you broke too. Every five and a half seconds, a product come out. Oh, this is for, um, this is to pop the curl pattern at your ends. Now, this is to pop the curl pattern at your mid shaft to your roots. This is for low porosity hair, but it's high porosity yet medium porosity. This is for high porosity hair that has a little bit of, um, it doesn't have a lot of elasticity, but it needs protein and lacks shine. This product is for the shine in your hair, but if it doesn't shine enough, this product right here is going to enhance your shine. And then this product right here is to enhance the shine that didn't enhance the shine before. Like, this is how it works. Can you tell me why my hair break off in the back? I don't wear a ponytail. Roxanne, I couldn't tell you, my love. You might need to actually start seeing a stylist or book a consultation, but I wouldn't be able to tell you without actually seeing your head. I'm also natural and don't perm, blow dry, or straighten my hair. I've never colored my hair, my natural hair. Any suggestions? You don't really need any suggestions. You're really 100% virgin. And if that's the way you want to be, then you're in a good place. That's probably the strongest hair on this live. Thank you. <laughs> I can't do nothing to my hair I won't take care of. Yes, and can too. So I'm, I'm done. I have length. So I'm natural with perm. Probably left from last. Was wearing a sew-in, now natural. What do I do? Um, if you're transitioning, you need to just transition and be done with it. Transitioning does not is not supposed to be done over a year, guys. Transitioning should be done for no more than six months. No more than six months. Oh, I'm not a product junkie. Okay. I've been natural for seven years. Awesome. So here's my question to the naturals. And I want you guys to be extremely honest. Extremely honest. If you are natural and have less than five hair care products in your product arsenal, whether it be your closet, your sink, under your sink, in a bathroom, in your kitchen, find your dresser, in your bedroom, whatever, put a one in the chat. 
There's 215 people on this live right now. And out of 215 people, I predict that only about five to seven can say they have less than five products for their hair right now. And I want you to correct me if I'm wrong. Someone asks, do you think the corporate world views us different when we are natural? I was afraid going into healthcare field. Everyone is not receptive. They do view you different, and I'm going to tell you why. We're already in a day and age where we're stereotyped by just breathing. We are already in a day and age where we are already stereotyped by just breathing. You haven't even said your name. You just breathe a breath of air, and you are already stereotyped as angry, uneducated, about to steal something, too dark, Afrocentric, you haven't even said, huh, just yet. You just inhaled. So you think that they're not going to stereotype you based on your hair? If I walk into a, a, a corporate office, let's say I walk into the White House right now, and because I like to be, um, I'm embracing myself, my style, and who I am, I decide that I want to have a streak of red hair, one streak of red hair, Okay. And I walk into the White House right now with that one streak of red hair while everything else is its natural color. They are automatically going to perceive me as ghetto. Whereas the other race, this side of the race, because we were just talking about this side. So this side can walk into that same White House with 1,800 highlights in different colors. And they are perceived to be um, eccentric, creative. They're, oh man, they're embracing themselves. They're speaking out about who they are. But there's not one negative connotation that comes out of it for them. Whereas you, it will. You walk in with your natural Afro puffs and they automatically think Black Panther movement. We are in times like that. And while a lot won't agree, it's very true. You're not taken as serious as the other races. We are not taken as serious because we're already perceived to be angry, illiterate, ghetto as hell. We might have a little bit of money, but we don't know nothing, even when we do. So you have to outwork everyone else and work seven times harder just to prove yourself. And you're always proving yourself. So absolutely, absolutely the corporate world views you different when you're natural. Absolutely. They viewed you different but even before your hair. They viewed you different before you exhaled. And then when you do come in and you do change your hairstyle, you do walk into the door and you own the room. You might have 800 bundles in your head and there'll only be a 12 inch. Oh my gosh, your hair just grows overnight. No, it didn't just grow overnight. I just used the weave. You've been doing it for how long? So yeah, it's very true. You are perceived different and, and viewed different when it comes on to your hair being natural, relaxed or whatever. It was viewed different before they even knew that you were dark skinned. They just looked at you. <gasps> and then you add the natural afro on top of it. Oh, Lord. How long should you wait to get a perm? I couldn't tell you how long you should wait to get a relaxer. It's really dependent on you, my dear. Yes, it is. And yes, you do. I've spent 200 since January and most I can't use because they don't work. I've started my natural journey in December and I'm two seconds away from a relaxer. And that's I hear that all the time. Hey, Crystal, can I use silk press products or relaxed hair? Also, I'm confused about your site. When I go to your site, I don't see your products such as goddess, etc. If you're going to EliteHairCareUSA.com, you'll see all of the products under the shop link. I hear from the older people when a dog bawls, it's a sign of death. I don't know if it's true or not, but that's what I heard growing up. Oh, I don't know, and I hope not. I'm also natural, and it also a lot of work. I used to wear natural hair back in the day. And don't remember it being this much work. Tempted to go back to a relaxer. It's not really a lot of work. But because we are in a day and age where you are stereotyped by just, just your look. All, your look is the most important thing ever now. It's not about the brain. It's not about the natural beauty. It's about how you look and how they perceive you. 
then yes, you do have to work hard because now you have to meet the masses. You have to actually fill in. You actually have to, you actually have to be a part of society and match what they're doing. I relax my middle nape area and grows extremely slow. I always have to cut it into a bob style. What will make the nape area grow as long as the size of my hair? Uh, couldn't really, honestly, Tiffany, I couldn't answer that at this point. I could not answer that without actually knowing who I'm answering it for and what the history is. I have lost count of how many products I have. And thank you for your honesty. Back in Jamaica, they say when a dog hollers, someone is, uh-oh. Okay, y'all. Well, I'm praying for nothing of that sort. So we just, we're going to put out a prayer for that one. I'm praying for nothing like that. I am a hair product junkie. Francis Adams, that's not true. Who said that? I have 15 products. You actually counted. Six, three, right? I had to cut my afro off. Wow. I was told to work natural hair is unprofessional. And I work in a bank. I'm okay. I'm telling you guys. I'm a hair product junkie. <laughs> you guys are funny. Heck, I have a kitty texturizer and have a lot of product. Okay. You ain't heard how old until you get a basset hound. He drives me crazy. Girl, mm -mm. I only use black castor oil and pure coconut oil for my natural hair. Okay, cool. My last employer had in the handbook only natural hair colors allowed. Exactly. So you guys have seen that term, only natural hair color allowed. When technically, that means that natural hair color, if I really wanted to really be an ass, if I really wanted to be an ass, I can go and dye my hair in auburn, I can dye my hair in copper, and I can claim to be albino. That's natural, right? But because I'm African-American, you're telling me that my hair does not grow red. Yet her hair grows red. You're telling me that my hair can't be blonde. I've seen a lot of naturally born blonde hair people who are African-American. So there's always a stereotype. Yep. Funny story. My hair was relaxed and dyed deep auburn. One day in NYC, the humidity took that short afro, and the white lawyers I work with on Park Avenue went crazy. They loved it. Crazy people. <laughs> I've been going back to natural hair, and my hair has grown its curls. If I braid every night, use strengthening biotin leave-in conditioner. Is that okay? I mean, if it works for you, it should be okay. I had to read your comment twice. You wear a curly afro or afro. They give you so many suggestions on what you should do to it. Yep, they do. Sorry, over 50 products. <laughs> Gloria, so she has over 50 products, you guys. I love being natural, and I don't mind putting work into my hair. That's a reflection of me. I wouldn't relax my hair again for nothing. That's awesome. Absolutely. We are the only, only people who, ever, who everybody, every other race is not like. I have 10 different products for my natural hair. So on average right now, I'm seeing between 5 and 10 products. That's the average. The devil is a liar. That dog just has gas. Absolutely. Dogs howl because they are descendants of wolves. I wear my natural 3C hair to work and was told a, co a few co-workers 
I would cut my hair short. I do the strengthening leave and conditioner and grease. That's it. And that's perfect. I mean, honestly, guys, you have to do what works best for you. That's like me. I have to spray a lot of spritz on my hair for my hair to actually hold. That's my choice. That works for me. While there's some clients out there that they don't want to drop a spritz and touch their hair. That's great. That works for you. It don't work for me. I'm natural. Why is the texture of my hair on the sides of my hair different from the rest of my hair? You can have 1,800 textures on your head. You can have one strand here that's coarse and the next strand right next to it that's nice and silky. It's very possible. I still have about six inches of relaxer left on my hair. I trim every six to eight weeks. I'm able to wash and go and also wet set for curls and release the waves. But the frizz, OMG, I'm crying. If you have about six inches left, I mean, while that is a good amount of hair, why are you holding on to it? What is that doing? Dogs howling have nothing to do. I'm, I'm over that. I have way too many products, but soon will be five. Your strength shampoo, conditioner, your silky moisture shampoo, conditioner, and goddess syrup. Thank you. And make sure you guys are rotating your products in order of the way they come in. You should not have any product in your product arsenal for over a year. It's lost its life. As India Ari sings, I am not my hair. It's sad for corporate to focus on that. Yes, it's sad for, for, for corporate to focus on that, but it's also sad for young black men to be shot by just playing loud music. It's also sad that your child cannot walk to the store and buy a bag of Skittles without being perpetrated as he's stealing something or he's about to come and get you. But this is the world that we live in, and I'm sorry to say it that way, but that is just the world that we live in. This is why when I go to the store and if I'm asking a question and your ass want to be catty with me because I'm sitting here and you automatically assume me to be difficult, this is why I take everything head on. I don't play games. Because when Becca, Jackie, um, whoever, um, Coley, um, Kaylee, Tara, all of them want to bring out whatever they want to bring out, like no, no disrespect to any race, culture, whatever, when they sit at the counter with their entire coupon book and the cashier is standing there being just as patient with them, they're perceived to be being thorough. When we do it, we're perceived to be being ghetto and we always are looking for a handout. We're stereotyped no matter what. That is the point. We're stereotyped no matter what. Can I wash sooner than two weeks? You can, but you don't want to make it a habit. It will dry the hair out. Good night. If I was to dye my hair, is there a product that I can use to protect the bond? Debbie, that's something that I would say you need to go to a stylist and do. I don't recommend at-home um, lightning services or color services because there are bond builders out there, but you don't have access to them, nor will you understand how to use them. That is something that a professional should do. That's kind of like a dentist pulling teeth. You shouldn't pull your own. I have so many I cannot count. Wow. My hair reverts so fast with humidity. It's thick but soft texture. And don't take some relaxers. What's a good one to try? So I don't talk professional products unless you're a stylist. And I'm having a face-to-face -face conversation with you as a stylist. So unfortunately, I can't really address that question. I hate when people judge you based on your look. But they do. So I'm going to give you guys, this is going to be a little story, right? And it's also a lesson to every one of you. And this is a story, my lesson, that I got. So you guys hear me and hear me really good. It has nothing to do with hair. But this has a lot to do with the perception of how we see people and how we prejudge people and how we're prejudiced against people. Because as, as we know, prejudice is really the word that we should be using. Okay? Prejudice meaning means to be prejudged. Prejudice, prejudge. Okay? I'm inside the mall here, and it's, it's considered our luxury version of the mall. It's called Mall Millennia. 
And I'm walking through the mall, doing my little shopping. In my mind, you know, I'm I'm splurging. I'm, I'm don't worry about it. In my mind, I'm splurging, right? So I walk outside of a store and I see this old skinny white guy. He has on some really short shorts. His body is packed full of hair. His hair is not combed. He looks dirty. And he's walking through the mall and he has a smile on his face. And as I walk out of the store, I clutch my bag. And I'm walking behind him because we're going in the same direction. And in my mind, I'm talking to myself. And I'm like, why is security allowing this man in the mall? Why is security not, like, why are they allowing bums? This is me talking in my mind to myself. Why is security allowing bums to be in the mall? Why is this, this, is, this shouldn't even be happening. Like, I'm coming here spending my money, and I'm spending my money, and I have, it's a lot of vagrant, vagrants here and all of that, right? Okay. So I finished my shopping. He goes his way. I go my way. I finished my shopping. So I go outside and I have my valet ticket because, you know, people say when you valet, you know, use that bitch. So I valet. Valet my little Maxima. At this point, I had a little Maxima, the newer shape Maxima. Not the new Maxima now, but the one that was like a bubble. So, you know, those were real expensive and it was really poshy at that time because that was the higher version in Nissan, right? Okay. Give man my ticket. And as I'm giving him my ticket, I see the, the same little old, sleazy, dirty-looking white guy come outside. And I notice that he has a ticket. So with his ticket, he walks over to the valet, and the valet person knows his name. In my mind, I'm like, you know, I'm tripping. I'm like, hold up, what? In my mind, I'm like, oh, he must be working for them. And they must know him because he just helps out. This is still me talking to myself. Once again, prejudging. So I noticed that they run off and I see this car come around into the valet. I don't even know the name of. Some extravagant looking Bentley probably that didn't even have the Bentley name on it. But you can tell that it was a foreign car that I could not afford. And then here comes my little Maxima trickling right behind it. So all of a sudden... The same little dirty looking white guy with the little shorts on with his hairy, nasty looking body who I thought was a vagrant, who I thought was a homeless man, who I thought security should have escorted out of the mall, goes and gets into his beautiful foreign car that I cannot spell because I do not know the name of it. That is how foreign it is. Okay. The valet driver lets him into his car and he hands him a hundred dollar bill. I get into my car looking stupid and hand the valet guy five bucks. Now, you tell me what lesson you just got out of the story that I just gave you because I just prejudged him. I knew nothing about him. I had already assumed that he was a bum. He shouldn't have been in the mall. I had already told myself security should have escorted him out because I'm in here splurging and I'm spending my little two, three hundred dollars that I had made for the day. And I was that that was that bitch. I was spending my check. OK, and he should not be here. Now, who just looks stupid? Me who prejudged him. Or him who smiled when he got in his car because he was laughing at me, knowing that I had judged him. That tells you the moral of the story, absolutely, Ray, is do not judge a book by its cover because you will make an ass out of yourself. And that day, I made an ass out of myself. That day, I had to repent in my car because I looked so tiny. I felt so small because I had degraded him. I degraded him before we had even gotten out of the mall. I judged him. I pre-judged him. I was prejudiced to him. And this happens to African-American people every single day. This happens every single day. And if people took heed to lessons like what I just told you happened to myself, they would never do it again. You have no space to judge anyone. Because while I'm sitting there judging him, He's pulling off in a $280,000 car. I'm pulling off in a $600 a month car note that I could barely afford at that point in life. So let's chat. Uh-huh. Let's chat. Right. That is the moral to the story. Don't judge anyone. Do not judge because you will be judged. And I was judged that day and I looked so tiny. I felt so tiny. And this happened years ago, you guys. 
years ago. And I still tell the story to this day because I need people to understand that prejudging someone is really, really what causes a lot of the trouble that we have in life today. Prejudice is a learned behavior. Take notice of, a, of children. They don't care what color. They play and hug until adults pull them away. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm about ready to perm. I'm trying to be natural. I did it for 10 years and just wore a protective style. Will my hair feel good with the vitamin? Help, what should I do to stay healthy? Book a consultation, Rosalind. And we will talk more about it. That's more of a personal question. We don't know anything about other people. And it's amazing the thoughts that we have about people just because. Absolutely. Good night, Desiree. If we all are honest, and we've done that at some point, sad but true. Thanks for your transparency. We all have learned lessons and become better. Absolutely. We all have also learned lessons and become worse, too. But back on to, because I just I strayed off for a couple minutes, about the pros and cons of natural and relaxed hair. I don't want you guys to take those um, pros and cons over your head. I don't want you guys to take those pros and cons over your head. Make the decision that is best for you and run with it. Don't allow anyone to peer pressure you. Don't allow anyone to make the decision for you. You have to know what to do with it. So if you're one of those people where you didn't, you don't even comb your hair when you're natural, why are you natural? If you're one of those people where you're relaxed and you won't even get a relaxer on the time schedule that you should, then why are you relaxed? If you're one of the people where you want to be able to just only wear protective styles and you're not going to do anything other than wear protective styles, why do you have a relaxer? So you guys just do what's best for you. Don't worry about what this superstar is wearing. Okay, Oprah, Oprah at one point in time was Miss Hair Care Fiend. Now you're wearing wigs. Nobody can't tell me that ain't a wig. That's a wig. That ain't her hair. That is a wig. So she's doing what's best for her. So do what's best for you. You repented. Stop beating yourself up. You did learn that that's more than others are able to do. Oh, I repented. Absolutely. I'm not beating myself up, but I'm definitely one to give that experience to someone else for people to understand how small you can make yourself look by prejudging another person. And that's something that we deal with when we're natural or relaxed as an African-American. You're prejudged before you even breathe. You walk into the Walgreens and they clutch their purse, staring at you. You walk into the Publix and people looking at you like automatically they know that you are here for free stuff. Oh, they are here for the free cookie that they give to your kid at the breakfast. And I every time, even with money in hand, I'm get that cookie because my kids want it. Because when Jackie's kids get it and she brings all nine of hers, it's okay then. So give me the same respect. I live out of state and want to relax her. What do you about a consultation? Um, you can do virtual consultation. So you go to EliteHairCareUSA.com. And that's where you'll be able to book it. Oh, an update for you guys is I lost an additional pound between last night and today. Pew, pew, pew. Yeah. It depends on your hair. I know it grows and tolerates styles. But what would you say the best protective style is? None of them. None of them are the best. They are all one and the same. They all do the same thing. They make you dependent on them. Trust me, I was dependent on them. It took me a long time to get to the phase that I'm at now where I knew to grow out of that. I knew to embrace my own and care for the hair that I have on my head because I know what the industry will do and the industry will make it where you're dependent on that kind of stuff. Okay, wigs are popular. Lace fronts are popular. Lace fronts are popular, right? I'm going I'm to I'm show y'all. I'm going to drop the coins on y'all and drop bombs real quick. So lace frontals are very popular now, right? Lace glue 
and tape is very popular now, right? So is alopecia. And dermatologists are making a killing. So this whole big circle right here that's going around is a big circle. It's a big money-making scheme. Okay, we're going to push that people wear lace fronts. We're going to push that they put it to their hairline where hair still grows. We're going to push for them to kill the follicle the hairline so that then they can go and buy more wigs and buy more lace glue and then they'll start worrying why is it not growing back so then they go to the dermatologist who now prescribes them stuff for them to go back to these pharmaceutical companies who were the big dogs from the beginning because they made this plan years ago and we fell in a trap so wake up wake up are you naturally relaxed i'm fully relaxed I'm fully relaxed. Yep. And I have wigs, guys. But what I'm not going to do is fall into the trap where it, may, it makes it a necessity. Now I can't put my clothes on without putting on a wig because I don't have any hair. Because you killed the hair that you were blessed with. The only time that wigs make sense to me is if you have a terminally ill disease. That's the only time a wig makes sense to me. Such as cancer such as your hair fell out from something else. That is what wigs were really made for. I remember when no one wanted to be caught dead in a wig. Now all of a sudden people are growing their hair and going natural just so they can braid it and put wigs on. Well, you shave your head bald like Tamar Braxton so you could wear wigs? That is the dumbest thing I've heard. I haven't had a relax in about three years. I'm considered a natural. For the most part, but you still have relaxed hair on the ends. Have you ever thought about opening a beauty supply store? Absolutely not, because it's a market that's dominated by another culture, and I'm not going to be supported as they would. We would choose to, we refuse to support our own because you're, you're perceived as stealing, but not knowing that they are the stealer. Hi, Crystal. Shout out from Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Oh, hey, Teresa. I should be studying. You should be studying, Hershey. Should you wear a covering on your head at night? Uh, I do. I just wear a scarf around my side, so. I got teens wearing wigs. Like, I, I'm like, what? Uh, you got children. Yes. Okay, the first day of school, my daughter just went to the sixth grade. The first day of school, you got on a lace frontal. Can you spell the name of the glue that you have on your head? Do you even know how to wipe your tutu good? What you got on a full lace wig? People need to get their minds right. I will say it again. I love to listen to you teach. You say so much of the same things. Thank you, Kim. The same people that made fun of folks wearing wigs wear them now. Bloop. Bloop. I'm natural and my hair does not like natural products. Just now purchased the main choice product and my hair liked it. That's great. I tried to place my order, but I can't get through. You can't get through with what? The site is active. I'm, I'm receiving orders as I'm sitting here on the live. I can see them. She said, you know how to wash a suit. <laughs> I'm just saying. You got on a lace frontal, but you don't even know how to wipe your bottom. You still got streaks in your drawers. So how you wear lace fronts? How are you wearing $200 lace fronts? Why is your parent paying $300 and your child, your child still got Fs in PE? Huh? What? That's supposed to be a privilege. It's not supposed to be an adult thing. They're trying to make their child grow up too quick. You make your child ball before they even get to the ninth grade. I only use organic moose oil on my beard. Freshly sourced from the forest of Nova Scotia. Well, Jack, you go ahead. You, <laughs> I have nothing to say. You go ahead, honey. You go ahead and source, get your forest source Nova Scotia beard oil. Absolutely. I read in articles that certain ingredients are banned in the UK that are in black hair care products that are harmful but continue sold in the US. Yeah, EU products and Canadian products 
um, it's EU standards, Canadian standards, and um, Asia also has their own standard. Certain parts of the country, you can't have certain products. So typically, most products are only in Thailand and another part of Asia. Those are the only two places that they will allow certain products. And same thing in the UK. If it's not met meeting to EU standards, you can't sell it. So a lot of large manufacturers, they have to manufacture their products in different places to account for different countries. I do have a filter, y'all. Don't do that. I do have a filter. Uh, I do. Oh, you tried to place your order for the tea. And what happened, Linda? So go to totallifechanges.com forward slash Elite Hair Care USA. Listen, let's not even talk about first grade. We're just going to leave that ahead. Not a F in PE. You only have to show up and play in PE. Exactly. But your baby got $600 worth of bundles. Mm-hmm. I got a curly perm. Can I get a wave? I'm not sure. Still going to go, Mez. I have to see your hair. Remember, animals can see things that you cannot. Sometimes they're trying to warn you of something. Be aware. We've embraced before third grade, third birthday. <laughs> You're going off tonight. I'm not mad at you. You speak the truth. How can I show you my hair? If you're trying to come to me for a um appointment, Selena, then you can schedule a consultation. If not, you need to do that with the stylist that you're going to. A little personal is your husband Jamaican. I've been with one for three years expecting a baby and tell you he's a handful and yes, I'm American. No, he's not Jamaican. These babies all over Instagram wearing frontals, why? Exactly. I do not know. I think you're hilarious. It's because you're telling the truth. <laughs> okay, so you have to go to totallifechanges.com forward slash Elite Hair Care USA, and that is where you can get the tea. So totallifechanges.com forward slash Elite Hair Care USA. I've been wearing scarves for years trying to protect my hairline. I have people telling me I should wear, I should get a wig that I would look better. No, that don't sound too nice. For the fact that they tell you you should get a wig, you'll look better. I'm the type to go to, okay, well, maybe you need to get one too because you look like shit too. <laughs> Thank you for answering. You're welcome. Madam CJ was the queen of... That's why they have her in all the history books. Absolutely. How do I get the flat iron? Uh, you go to EliteHairCareUSA.com. I need you to see my hair. I need your help. I trust no one in my area. <laughs> I'm done. Wait. I trust no one in my area. Okay, and so you can book a virtual consultation by going to EliteHairCareUSA.com. Good night. Bob Ross has a great perm. If I could perm my hair like Bob Ross, I'd do it tomorrow. Listen, people trust me. I'll be like, you trust me? I'm a cancer. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, so I am beat for the night. I'm about to go and lay it down. But thank you guys so much for joining me tonight on the live. 
make sure that you subscribe to my channel thumbs up this video please once we get off um turn on your notifications because i am liable to come on here at any person just any time right i'm getting tired i need to go to sleep all right my peeps have a good night peace out